I pastor Life Church International Imuru and also as you have begun we began with Truth Mentorship Society which is a body that does interdenom meeting with the hunger of revival upon our generation. So let me dive straight to the topic of the day. I have three objectives. How to enter in a godly relationship. How to cultivate a godly relationship. Myths and misconceptions about marriage. And I want to talk about love made in Eden. Back to the original design. Let us look at Genesis chapter number 2 and verse 15. When you're talking relationships, nobody sleeps. So this is a good topic. Genesis 2, 15. Let us build it from scripture. Hallelujah. The Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to work it, a care of it. So the Lord took the man. Who was this man that the Lord took? Let us go to Genesis chapter number 1 from verse 25. Let us understand this man. This thing will be deep because relationship is not about feelings. God made the wild animals according to their kind. Are you seeing that name kind? The livestock according to their kind and the creatures that move along the ground according to their kind. And God saw that it was good. The Hebrew word there is functional. So animals were made according to their kind. But in Genesis 1, 26, then God said, let us make man. The original rendering is not man. It is mankind. Remember he made animals according to their kind. But now he is making a man kind. Now, let's get this right. That man is not male. It is a kind that is man. Now, God said, let us make a kind that is man. So God was making a kind of God that is man. Okay, I said it's going to be deep. I have no five keys of a functional relationship. I have scripture. Are we together? So this man is a kind of God in human form. Can we journey further? The earth is a tabernacle or a sanctuary. That's what the earth is. It's a tabernacle or a sanctuary. And the reason why the Bible ends with a new earth and a new heaven is because when sin entered, the sanctuary was defiled. Are we together? When you go to cultures of deities or gods, when people have sanctuaries for their gods, they put images of their gods in the sanctuaries. Now, this is a sanctuary of God. And God placed his image in this sanctuary. And that's you and me. So this man, you can see, let us, plural. Because the Hebrew version of talking about a big person was plural. So if bishop is great in our day, we cannot refer him to him. We will refer him to them. 
Are we together? In our likeness, let's make man in our image. That is projection, not reflection. My daughter, I have an amazing daughter. When she was growing up, people were saying, Guy, can I find another baba? If today I was to deny my daughter, my wife will laugh and just say DNA. And they will take a sample of her saliva, saliva, and they will discover there are elements in me that are in her. Aye. So when God was saying, let us, let them bear our image, it means there are things in us that they carry. Okay. And likeness, that is automatically, because they are, they, our nature is in them, they will behave like us. Now, God made man. The second part of this scripture is for intercessors. Hello? That second part is for intercessors. Because it shows the three spheres of rulership. Hydrosphere, lithosphere, and atmosphere. Okay, I'm a geologist by training. That is GXC form 2. Hydrosphere is water bodies, marine power. Lithosphere is land, land power. And atmosphere is powers that rule the heavens and the air. Cellar. We are here for relationships. Let's go to the next one. Now let's read. The most complicated verse that does not obey grammatical order in the Bible. Because this verse cannot be accurate in English because it speaks spiritual realities. God created man singular. In his own image singular. In the image of God, he created him singular. Male and female, he created them plural. That verse breaks the sequence of grammar. How does a singular entity change to be plural in the same statement? Now, forget biology and forget English and come to theology. When you hear male, you think a man. When you hear female, you think a woman because of sexual organs. The, the name male in the Bible has nothing to do with a man according to what we define. The name female has nothing to do with a woman. You see, the Holy Spirit is always called parakletos in Greek. The Holy Spirit is given a feminine dimension. But the Holy Spirit does not have gender. Because God does not have gender. So what does this mean? God created man. That male means authority. And that female means power. So there was one, remember, this is a kind of God. So in this kind, he has put authority and power wrapped up in one order. Are we together? Are we together up to there? So, this man, singular, had the ability to demonstrate the authority and power of God. Now, remember this man, for him to carry these dual dimensions, 
He existed as a spirit. This one of Genesis was not flesh. This one was a spirit. That's why he had the ability to exist as authority and power. This was not an amorphodite. That's why I said forget biology and medicine. Uh, are we there? Now, can I confirm to you that this man was a spirit? Genesis 2, 7. Genesis 2, 7. Najwa mna mna learning love. Not 27.7. That's your message, sir. Mine is 2.7. You're doing well. But even there, we could get a message. But let's stick to the theme. Everybody read. Okay, begin from 5. Begin from 5. So that we can know. Begin from 5. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Now listen. Where was the man of Genesis one? That man was a spirit. Spirits don't hold gems. Spirits cannot work on there. So we can see the operation of the world was suspended because there was no man physically. Now this begins to open our eyes that you are a spirit that lives in a body. And your assignment is not in the body. Your body gives you legal ground of operation on earth. And that order must be like so. The reason why many relationships fail is because people bring their bodies and not their spirits. So you take two hours on the mirror, applying foundation, working on the eyelashes, makeup, looking for the tightest and the fitting vessels. Making sure that all you bring on that table is flesh and blood. And the man takes time to look for his muscle shut and don't touch and load his wallet. So these two people have met on a carnal level. That relationship will end up in bed, not on the altar. Because what they brought was their bodies. And the lady will begin to ask, why is it that all men are after my body? But what did you bring? Why is it that all women are after my money? But what did you show me? And that's the first error. There is a lot of body encounters. The order of man is spirit, soul, body. That's why when you mature in the spirit, you never marry because of body size and shape. You marry because of spirit size and shape. If you are still on how, what is a color skin? Biceps. Beard gang. You still have some growing to do. Because a man can have beards, but with the brain of a child. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, the Lord said, since there was no man to deal the land, the Lord now formed. Now that is seven. The Lord formed the man of the dust. So there was a man that God created. And there was a man that God formed. The assignment of man was not in the form. The assignment of man was on the created being, the spirit. 
The form this body gives me legal ground to operate on earth. That's the role of this body. Legality on earth. But all my assignments are in the spirit. I cannot know myself according to the body. That's why Paul writes and says, now we know no man after the flesh. Because you are a spirit wrapped up with earth. And for those that have stayed in marriage and we look at the misconception, they will tell you after two years, you get used to the beauty. After two years, you get used to the biceps. And you begin to look for something greater than appearance. It's the same thing. I give you a Range Rover today. After two months, the, the excitement will not be there. And the reason why many marriages are not working is because people marry for the wrong reasons. And the reason why many people are not even staying in relationships is because their pattern has been disrupted. We are using the secular pattern to run kingdom relationships. And it can't work. So the Lord, God formed the man of them and breathed in him and became a living being. Or a, or a living soul. That man was both male and female in Eden. He had authority and power. Now, we were looking for the man that God took. That is the man. Okay. And his name was not Adam. The problem with this man, he named everything except himself. He said, your name shall be Eve, the mother of all creation. When the Lord was calling in Eden after the fall, he said, Adam, Adam, where are you? We are coming to that question. That name Adam means from the clay. So that is not a name. It is a source. <laughs> okay. I am. Now let's go to 15. 15 is where we begin to get answers. Hallelujah. I, I dated, I dated until I got tired. Until this scripture came into my spirit. I, I, I was heartbroken. Relationships failed successfully. <laughs> and... As I continue to grow, I discovered that there are people God brings in our lives for discipleship. But we decided to enter courtship. And when the program of discipleship is over, the Lord takes them out of the class and the Lord hands them over to their right owner. That is how you date a man or a woman for four years. You teach them prayer, teach them the word of God, and you prepare them. And by the time they become a wife, someone marries them. Le let me help you. <laughs> let me help you. The Lord brought her or him for discipleship. But your appetites introduce other agendas. And if you have ever found yourself in such a situation, let me encourage you. During the wedding ceremony, please sit where a pastoral team sits. Because you pastored that person. <laughs> Don't pray for thunder and rain during their wedding. Stand where a pastor stand and say, that's my spiritual son. That one. <laughs> Hallelujah. Or your spiritual daughter. And bless the Lord for the good work you've done. The Lord God took the man and put him and put him in the garden of Eden to work it and take care of it. That name Eden means in the presence of God. The first place God took man was in his presence. And then in the presence 
there is the purpose of God. So, you, if you need a wife or a husband, show up in the presence. Show up in the presence. In the book of Corinthians, the Bible says, what does light have to do with darkness? And it talks about being yoked with Belial. That is a demon of lawlessness and rowdiness. According to God, a non-believer is in the level of a demon called Belial. I know we, we, we simplify this thing. Now what happens when he talks about don't be unequally yoked? A yoke was designed for animals of the same species. Or meishi mwana kuna zile bulls who are in Alima. You can never place a donkey where a bull is supposed to show up with its head. Because even those who are designing the yoke they design it for bulls, animals of the same species. The yoke of marriage is designed for people of the same species, born again. The moment you put a horse and a camel in the same yoke, one will bear more weight and it is tiresome. That's why you must interrogate the species. And don't look for a God-fearing man. Even the devil is God-fearing. <laughs> look for a God-loving man or woman. Those are the standards. So the first thing was presence and the second one was purpose. Kuna kuanga naswali ya pastor, how do I know if she's the one or he's the one? Very simple. What is your purpose? Your purpose is the elimination method. When I knew God has called me to ministry, so many potential ladies were eliminated. Some were good in business. I knew they can't fit in this assignment. Because God called me for souls, not sales. Some were prophesying, vibrating. I also knew they are not the ones. Not because I was not looking for prayer for women. It's because I was looking for a woman we can grow together in the Lord. And in my heart of heart, I was looking for a woman that I can raise in the Lord. Because some of them don't submit. Because when there is chaos, they begin to say, yesterday I had a vision. And I sense the devil <laughs> is attacking us. So I was looking at one that we were almost in the same level spiritually. Because... Sometimes you get a person who is very high and they use their position to manipulate you. I tell you, yesterday the Lord told me the, the point is you are flirting with another woman. You need to apologize. You don't begin to wake up and say as I was flirting, there are things God was revealing. <laughs> are you getting me? So that level of balance was needed and everyone had a wife that I needed to marry even you there are people who feel you need to be married by so and so there is no matchmaker even pastors it is a choice we can have desires have you ever realized some of the perfect couples don't go far and some of the people will look like they are mother Othanio. They are the ones who last. 
Yes. Some of these perfect, they don't last. Because God is the best matchmaker. No man, even we pastors, we can advise, but we cannot decide. Because God knows your destiny. Like I'll tell you, I led my wife to the Lord. I baptized her, discipled her, married her, and I'm pastoring her. Now, it's not that I went to look for an unbeliever, no. When we met, I discovered she was not born again. I told the Lord, I know your standards, and at least I know, I don't know who to marry, but I know this one, no. Until there's a green light. Then she began to come to fellowship. Then I discovered she came from a Muslim background, and she was not permitted to go to church. So it was not her fault. She had not heard the gospel. So one day she came, had the gospel, I was preaching, and said, I want to give my life to Jesus. I led her to, to Jesus. She attended discipleship class. It was so good, she repeated. <laughs> and now I began to locate her at. I said, this one is a good one. My most romantic moment was not any dinner that we took. It's when I saw my wife coming in the baptism pool. Do you know why? There was no makeup. I saw the real woman. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's good to attend baptisms. And I saw her, I said, Lord, this is a good thing. <laughs> and we got married. We did not date for five years. It was not a presidential <laughs> term. Two years was enough. One year to interrogate one another. And the second year to plan the wedding. There is a level of maturity that you reach and you know what you want. And you are specific and you have your non-negotiables. Values. It had nothing to do with appearance. Values, your heart, attitude. Some things were non-negotiable. And we met on a ground. I used to live with my young sister. Because I couldn't trust myself with my freedom. There are some of you live alone. And that is the door of all your mistakes. You need someone that can disrupt your singlehood. And so my young sister was there and I told her, if any lady ever comes in this house and stays past eight, news ikianza kusomwa, news, kujo niambie, pastor T, unalala sangapi. One, to remind me that I'm a pastor and there is a woman in that house past her hours. Two weeks to the wedding are the most tempting weeks. You can abstain for two years. You get closer. You begin now to get attractive. And I remember one day my wife stayed in my house until 11. We were planning for the wedding. My sister was there. And I remember dropping her and she gave me a lecture and told me, how many people will understand she's your fiancé? 11. What were you doing with a woman in a car alone and her? How many? I told her, I have failed as your pastor. Forgive me, my sister. It will never happen. At least I was sure. There were around 10 days. <laughs> and I knew it will never happen because someone was about to board. That time she was a discolor. Amen. Hallelujah. Don't make her board without boarding certificates. Mm. Yes. <laughs> Are you seeing that? Let, let's continue reading. And the Lord God commanded the man, you are free to eat from any tree in the garden. It was a command. Continue. But you must not eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, for when you eat of it, you will surely die. Continue. Everybody read. Hold it there. Was it the opinion of some elders in the village? Who kept on asking Utaolewa Lini? 
Was it the pressure in our subgroup? Has the Lord said over your life? God looked at man and said, it is not good for man to be alone. Grammar is very good. It was not lonely. This has nothing to do with emotions. It was alone numerical. Many people date because they are lonely. God, remember man had a relationship with God. I know you have a relationship with Christ, but he's not your boyfriend. You need someone in your realm. God is, is a spirit in another realm. And you need someone of your species. Unaeza kuwa na paka. Unakashikanga uziku kikaita majina. That is not your species. Nakachiwawa. Nakaitanga babe. That is your species. You need a man in your realm. A man or a woman. Not a spirit. <laughs> Intercessors are we together? Miaka in a song away Papa Bado yes on your boyfriend. Apana. You need a person in your realm. Human. Damn. But God must say it is not good. When was God saying it is not good? When man was in Eden doing the work of God. It is called purpose. Now what was God doing? He never said, oh, man is alone. He needs a lover. That is not the language. The language is, man needs a helper. God never created marriage for love. By the way, one of the deceptions about marriage is that people marry because of love. Hey! It is a lie. And, and I'll take you through Bible. And it is women who love men. It is not your own. I don't know who, you, who told you to love men. Okay. Ephesians 5, 21 and 22. Let's see who needs to love who. Ephesians 5 21 and 22 what are you doing washing your boyfriend dishes? The Bible says wives, not girlfriends. Does the Bible say love? It says submit to your as unto what does that word mean? That name submit is military. It is a language of rank. Meaning that you can be a PhD holder married to a form 4 liver but you know according to rank he's above me. Because God is not an author of confusion. This word submit is borrowed from Greek military words. You know I heard Bishop is Daktari. He knows that in New Testament, some words were borrowed by Paul so that he can explain some truth of the gospel. Especially when he was talking to Greeks and people that were under the Greek culture. So when they read this, they knew. As a woman, when you look at your husband, you don't submit because he has money. You don't submit because he's wealthy. You don't submit because he has status. 
You submit because in that house, God has given him a rank called husband. In the military, there are people who are more masculine than the commander. Some are more educated than the commander. But the orders of a commander are low. And they submit because they honor the rank. But the Bible does not leave it unto foolish submission. Because you're not a punching bag. As unto the Lord. Meaning that if this submission is not according to the word of God, you have the right not to. I'll give you a very practical example. My wife has worked in the insurance for 10 years. And this time she was working in a senior position. And I gave one of my pastors the car. And he didn't have a driving license. So he drove as he was reversing. He was going for a mission. And he came, he said, we are sorry, Nene. So we waited for my wife. So he said, hey, baby, you're good. Uh, you know, we have a small accident. She said, what? Uh, Mr. William was driving the car. And then we said, since you work in the insurance, so you write a report and say, you're the one who was driving. Do you know what she told me? I cannot lie. I... <laughs> I almost became spiritual. I said, you know, even Adam, Abraham lied <laughs> for security purpose. And was she rebellious? No. Whatever we were requesting, was not as unto the Lord. So she stood because the first relationship is her relationship with God. Are we together? And that's why if you are married to a man that is of not the same species, you will struggle. Imagine a man coming with cultural mindset. Na nakwambia kwetu wa mama hawaongeangi. Na nakutuma mzinga. Endo nilete Jameson. Ambia lakini ni meokeka kwambia kwetu wa mama wajibungi waze. No kendelea hivyo ni makofi. It's a burden. That's why this understanding has to be there. Am I speaking to anyone? So women, the language is not manipulation and abuse. Uh -uh. It is. So that means... If all of us are born again, we subscribe to one order. I know what to do and she knows what to do. If it's not of the Lord, she has no authority to submit. Can I even go further? Yes. A lady came and told me, Pasi, I'm afraid. I asked her why. She told me, my relationship is sexual. I told her, leave. She said, but I don't want to hurt him. I said, okay. I said, now, here, you have a relationship with Jesus and a relationship with Jemo. Jesus wants you to walk pure. If you don't walk pure, you hurt Jesus. Jemo wants sex. If you don't give Jemo sex, you hurt Jemo. Who is better to hurt? Now I said, I said, listen, Jemo can never give you Jesus, but Jesus can give you another Jemo. So I say, choose who you want to lose because someone will be hurt at the end of the day. <laughs> So, the language here is submit. And this one will begin to address the question of myths and misconception of marriage. Is that we don't marry for love. We marry for purpose. We don't marry for, we marry for purpose. And when we are so much in tune in purpose automatically we will be connected emotionally. 
and I'll come to that of eight masses. Now, go to 23. Go to 23. I want to show you how we have missed. Everybody read. Do you know why Paul is using this example? Because I tell you the truth. We are more concerned about the welfare of the body more than the head. So, a godly husband will take care of his body. And it is not by force, manipulation, coercion. You will take care of your body. That's your wife. It is your responsibility to feed her, clothe her, and take care of her. Hallelujah. There are times I always tell my wife, come and damage my wallet. Right now she's pregnant. Bonus if you will. Akini to me at SMS EV and yambia leo. Na vile naskele kuku ya KFC ni may miss. I tell you, I'll have to look for it. Whether I have money or because you take care. I mwili kiski anja. How do you take care of it? You take care of it well. Now see what men are given to do. 24. Everybody read. Uh -huh, 25. Hold it there. Husbands, if you're sitting next to a woman, just ask her, Nani ni kuperu se akupenda hai? Buwana sifi. We are going back to the Bible. <laughs> Husbands, do what? Love your... 